Hello, everyone. Um, thank you for joining the meeting. Uh, for business announcements, I don't have anything major other than um, just a reminder for our um, for our um, workshop next week uh, on uh, how to give effective evaluations. So, you know, please join that session. It will help you if you are working on uh, giving evaluations. You know, it can work you it can work in your personal life as well as in your professional life. It's 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 a skill um, that uh, that you can get better at as you practice. So Tina Rene Disuza, who is the district champion for this year, she is going to share some tips on how to get better at giving evaluations. So, you know, don't miss this awesome opportunity. She is coming to our club to um, run that workshop. All right, um, that's all I have. Um, and today we have our elections and I am really excited for that. Um, and with that, I would like to hand it over to Mr. Doug, who is also the Toastmasters of the meeting today. And he is going to um, run the election. All, All right. right. Thank you for that introduction. I want to, uh, and, and by the way, I, I want to do this just so that everybody understands the process that we're going to follow. Uh, this is straight out of the club leadership handbook. So let me go ahead and share my screen. And I know this is going to be boring and we're going to like end up reading it word for word and that's okay. But I just want everybody to be aware of what we're doing and why we're doing it. Uh, and the reason that it's important is because it needs to be fair and it needs to be impartial and we need to follow the rules. Can everybody see my screen right now? Okay. So step one, accept nominations for the office of president or other offices for this case. Um, the second one is ask for seconding, uh, seconding speeches. Any member may stand to nominate, uh, any member may stand to second the nomination and give a short speech, usually two minutes, on the qualifications of the nominee. Seconding speeches are given in alphabetical order by candidate's last name. Ask the nominee if they would accept the position if elected. By the way, if you're doing this and you haven't talked to that person first, you might want to talk to them. That's pretty, pretty low to <laughs> nominate somebody if you haven't asked them. Allow the nominee two minutes to speak on their behalf. Um, but I'm just reading the rules as they are. Uh, fourth, ask for additional nominations uh, for the Office of the President. If others are nominated, uh, repeat steps two, three, and four for each nominee. Okay. Step five, entertain a motion to close the nominations for the Office of President, or again, other offices. This requires a second and a vote. Instruct all members to cast their ballots. Uh, ask two people to tally the vote. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the same voting method we've always done in the past, but now when you're voting, what you're gonna do is you're gonna vote it to two people. It's kind of awkward, but, and we thought about doing it other ways, but we figured we're just gonna continue to follow the same process we always did. So you're gonna go into your um, chat and you will actually forward your votes to two separate people. And we'll pick those people um, as we're going along. Announce the winner. Um, should a tie occur in the ballots cast to resolve the tie, all cast ballots are discarded. A new vote is conducted to determine a winner. If ties continue to occur, ballots are discarded and a new vote is conducted until there is no longer a tie. Other forms of tie breaking are not official or binding to the club. And the last step is repeat these steps for each office. When elections are finished, introduce the newly elected uh, executive committee to the club. Thank you. That was very, very boring. Uh, I understand that. But I just wanted everybody to understand these are the rules that we're going to be executing to. to uh, and it's important that we follow the rules so that everything is fair. Um, as, of this part, as of this point, we're going to go ahead and start it out. And we are going to open uh, for nominations for the president. Right now, it's me and Brian Thrasher who are running for that. But if anybody else would like to um, 
jump in. A Lisa, I just saw your hand. I got a question. Uh, yes. Who's gonna? Who are we gonna send our boats to? Yes, I'm gonna pick that in just a bit, uh, and we're just gonna basically ask uh, two people that are not running. It could be anybody. So, who would like to be uh, a vote tally person? Andre, we got one. Louisa, you're raising your hand for that position as well? Yeah, I could do it, yes. Seems to okay, be so the two people that are going to be tallying, and by the way, it doesn't have to be the same people. So if Louisa or Andre, if you want to run for an office, you can totally um, say, hey, we're going to run for an office and somebody else can tally the vote for that. So it doesn't have to be the same. I, I'm seeing a big no on both of their faces. So we're going to go with that. So please, what your, Ava, yes? I just have uh, one comment question. Yes. So I have a pre-established, so um, we have Candy on the call who's in her car. She won't be able to type. So yes. I have a code word system set up with her. So she will just need to speak at the end to cast her ballot. And then I will type that to the person with her name. Okay. So it's a code word that you guys won't know. So it's, it's just private between her and I, but that way she can still vote and be in the car at the same time without causing an accident. Is, is this an A&M thing? Is she an A&M person too? No, it's not like I got a code name. Okay, just want to make sure. I, we use fruit. Hey, watch it, Andre. <laughs> <laughs> hey, done. now. We're just trying to keep everybody safe. <laughs> hey, Candy. Yeah, it's all good. It's all good. All right. So at this point... Um, we have two people that are running for the office of the president, and that's going to be myself and Brian Thrasher. Are there anybody, does there anybody else that wants to run for that position? Anybody? Going once, <clears throat> going twice. Okay, at this point, we now start to the next part, which is um, we uh, motion to close the nominations for the president. So who would like to motion that? I motion okay. to close the vote for nomination of president. Okay, is that seconded? Second. Okay, so we are going to close that. <clears throat> Again, remember it's Andre and Louisa who are the ones that are going to be tallying it. But before we do that, um, on, or, uh, Brian Thrasher and myself both give get to give a um, uh, Two-minute speech. Uh, Brian, I think it's supposed to be in alphabetical order, but I don't really care. Do you want to go first or second? I'll go second. Like you said, it's in alphabetical order by last name. Yeah, okay. I wasn't going to, you know, fight the ordering. All right. So given that we're in a Toastmasters club, I think you would probably think that my uh, – I would say that the most important aspect of leadership is communication. And I actually think that it is, but it's not what you think that I'm saying. I don't necessarily think, or at least in this particular case, I don't think that the most important aspect of leadership is the ability to present. I think the most important aspect of leadership is the ability to listen at this point. Let me go ahead and explain exactly what I mean. Our club is entering a interesting phase. Uh, in probably several weeks or a few months, many of you are going to be back on campus. However, many more of you are still going to be virtual. Um, I don't, I mean, I have some ideas, but I don't actually know how this new hybrid meeting is going to work. Uh, there's going to be some things we're gonna try that will succeed and some things that we're gonna try that are going to fail. Uh, but I wanna make, make it very clear that I think that the most important aspect of this at this point is listening. Listening to my leadership team, obviously, but also listening to the club as a whole uh, and trying to come up with uh, the best way to serve both communities, the communities that are going to be on site and the people that are going to be remote. Um, and uh, I'd like to tell you you know, this is exactly how we're going to do it. And this is how we're going to, you know, execute this plan perfectly. Again, I have some ideas, but I think the most important part of this is just going to be listening and coming up with a, a community plan. Thanks for letting me uh, go. Do we go straight into my speech then? Yes, sorry. All right. I get. 
Thank you, Doug. This club has been one of the best experiences of my time at Dell. I came into it shy and reserved, and I feel like it's made me a much more confident and outgoing speaker. And I want to see it thrive in the future. To do that, I feel like we need every Dell master speaker attendee, both members and guests, to walk out of every meeting feeling three things. One, I've learned something useful. Two, I had fun. And three, I can't wait until next week. So how can we do this? Well, first, let's boost the educational content of this club. We're all going down our own paths, and that's great. But let's come together at the beginning of each meeting and actually have a moment where we talk about a specific actionable tip that we can use in that meeting and throughout the week to improve our public speaking. We should be having professional development every week because this is a professional club, and I think that's how we start that. Second, let's do all of that while also boosting the fun factor. Having fun is important. It makes our content engaging and teaches us how to engage with our audiences elsewhere. So let's take advantage of the virtual environment and have more breakout room sessions. Let's interact with our fellow Toastmasters. And then let's mix with the formula a little bit. Maybe one week, instead of counting filler words, the grammarian counts dramatic pauses. And then the next week, something completely different. Let's add some variety to our schedule so that this meeting is always fun. And finally, if we make it useful and we make it fun, then people will be excited to come back next week and they'll even want to bring a guest. That's how we move into the future. We should make this our oasis in a sea or in a desert of boring, useless meetings. This should be one where you're never bored and you never feel like it wasted your time. So if you want this to be a professional fun club and a fun professional club, that's the vision you're voting for when you vote for me. Thank you. Thank you very much, Brian. All right, at this point, you are all going to cast your ballots. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go into your voting um, or your chat thing, and you are going to cast your votes to Andre and Louisa. I would like to call for Candy's vocal vote, please. Go ahead, Candy. Steve, if you can hear me, Apple. Apple, thank you. Hey, also, I want to say that this is only for our Toastmaster members who are currently the members of the club. Yeah. Thank you. Back to you, Doug. All right, we're just waiting. Uh, we'll give it a little bit longer and then I'll make sure that everybody, I'll ask and make sure that everybody who wanted to vote has voted. So is there anybody who hasn't voted at this point? Raise your hand, wave at me. Okay, I'm waiting on you. Makes things more interesting. I'm sending one name to, to, to Andre and one name to Luis. <laughs> Oh, you're you're a jerk, Andre or Pablo. <laughs> yeah, I send different. I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Yeah, if we send different names to each, they'll just have to give their speeches forever. Yeah, <laughs> it'll be survival. All right, Chital, have have you voted now? Okay, is there anybody else who hasn't voted? All right, everybody is good. All right, uh, Louisa and Andre. Uh, Louisa, you can go first uh, since you were the, for the first one to raise your hand to volunteer for this position. Who won that? And then we'll ask if Andre, if he agrees. Uh, I got on the majority of votes, Brian. Okay, Andre? I have the same. There you go. Uh, Brian, you are now the new president. Thank you, everyone. I look forward to this next year. All right. Now we're going to go ahead and start with the next one. And I just realized, where is that list? I lost it. What is the next position? VP of Education. But VP we don't of have Education. A nominee, and we need one now. Do Ava, are you have... raising your hand? Are you Do raising your hand for VP of Education? Do we have any volunteers? Ava raised her hand. 
All right. So Ava, if you are the only person, is there anybody else uh, volunteering for B VP of education? And technically, if we're doing this by the book, someone needs to second my nomination. I second. Yeah, I'm just asking. I second. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I'm just. I'm just asking that. if anybody else is doing it at this point. Okay, so at this point, uh, we it's been seconded. Um, there's no need to hold a vote. Obviously, uh, Ava is the VP of Education. I'm. Go ahead. Technically, all in favor or any opposed can help with that one nomination vote, just in case someone is opposed to the position. Is there anybody that's opposed to the position of Ava? By the way, if you say you're opposed, you probably get to go for it yourself. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> just if we're doing it by the bylaw book. Yeah, I, and, uh, I, and I want to be very, very careful we do it in anything that actually has a, uh, um, a contested part. If there's only one person, we don't necessarily need to worry about it because there's only one person. All right. I have lost my list for right now. I think I closed it. Um, what's the next position? Secretary. Secretary. Uh, yeah, secretary. With Robert uh, Van Delden as the nominee. For secretary, yes. Okay, so we have Robert. Is there anybody else who would like to run for secretary? Anybody? I've got Robert. I nominate Hercules as support for Robert's <laughs> position. Uh, Hercules is trying to play with me right now. Sorry. Uh -oh. I can't right. say that. No, it's, it's all good. It's all good. Okay. Um, so uh, we, are we ready to close the nominations for secretary? I move to close nominations for secretary. Okay. Can I get a second? A second. Okay. So I'm going to ask, is there anybody opposed with Robert being secretary? Okay. Robert is now the secretary. What's their next position? Woo. Thank you. Thank you. Frustrating that I don't have the list. Membership, I think. Yeah. It's the order of hierarchy in the club. It's yeah. Membership. Brian Edenrich is the current nominee. Okay. Okay. Is there anybody else who would like to be VP of membership? All right. We're going to go with no on that. Uh, is there, uh, can I need somebody? I'm getting an echo. I move to close nominations for a second. Okay, second. thank you. Second. second. All right. Is there anybody opposed to Brian being the VP of education? Membership. Membership, sorry, VP of membership. All right, we got Brian. Yay, Brian. Okay. All right, what's our next position? Treasurer. Treasurer. However, we had nominated initially Brian Treasurer and Michelle Jones, and I, with this, Brian gets off the hook on this one. I'd yeah. like to withdraw on that. Yeah. Yeah. You, in fact, actually, I think that's one of the positions you. Uh, there's a few positions you can't do two of. President is one of them. Okay. So right now we just have Michelle Jones as the treasurer. Is that still correct, Michelle? Yes, it is. All right, Michelle. So uh, is there anybody else who would like to run for treasurer? I see you talking, Ava, but I can't tell what you're saying. <laughs> I don't read lips. All right, is there anybody else who would like to run for treasurer? All right, Stephen, you gotta, gotta close it for me. I moved to close nominations for treasurer. All right, I, I got a second. It. All right. I second. All right. Is there anybody who is opposed to Michelle being the treasurer? All right. Michelle, you are now the treasurer. All right. What's the next one? Master of Coin. All 
All right. Who is the uh, next person or uh, next slot? Surgeon of Arms. And Michelle was nominated. I'm assuming she's dropping that one. And you as well, Doug Hansen. All right. Well, Michelle has already gotten that. Uh, Michelle, you can, if you want to, actually do two slots. Did you want to do Sergeant of Arms? And okay, she is shaking her head no. So the only person that is Sergeant of Arms right now is me. Is there anybody else who wants to be Sergeant of Arms? All right. I moved okay, to Steven. Close, I moved Thanks. to close nominations for Sergeant at Arms. I second. I second. All right, cool. Is there anybody opposed with me being Sergeant of Arms? All right, cool. All right, and what's the last one? I think there's one more, or is that it? Yes, VP of uh, Public Relations. There's no nominees. Okay. Is there anybody who would like to do VP of Public Relations? I nominate Cheadle. Second. Ch Chital, is this something you would like to do? Do we have any other volunteer? <laughs> no, but if we don't have that position, so we don't have, so just to be clear, we don't have to have every position filled. Uh, we can actually have some vacancies and we can fill them later if need be. Uh, if you don't feel comfortable with that role, you don't have to feel like you have to do it. So, uh, I thought that it, we had to have them all because we have to submit the list yeah. for points. So yeah, for the have points. Yes, maybe for points. That may be true yeah. for points, but the the thing is, is there's actually only three positions that you have to have, and we've already gotten those three positions. Uh, I will volunteer. Okay, I, I'll do it. Okay. All right. Wait, didn't and nobody see what Andre put in the chat? Is that no? Is that no, binding? I didn't. Uh, what did? Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> it would be amazing, but all. <laughs> I would do it, but I don't have time, and I'm the type of person that if I'm gonna do something, I need to do it well, but I can't leave with it. <laughs> I know. Okay, and Same that's both. fine. You can you can say no, Veronica. <laughs> it's okay. You don't but have thank to. Thank you, Andre, for the nomination. All right. Is there anybody else that want, want VP of Public Relations? I would like to nominate Andre. <laughs> Andre? No, no. Andre's like, no. Okay. All right. Steven? I move to close nominations for... I, do I got a second? A second. All right. There we go. All right, is there anybody who doesn't want Chital to be VP of Public Relations? And remember, if you speak up, you're on the hook for running. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that really silences that pretty quickly. All right, Louisa, you've been giving me the list up until what's the next one? I thought I had everything ready. I don't know what happened to the list. Oh, no, well. now we have only the... The non-official roles, which is VP of Education um, Assistant, which we have Veronica for that. And we also have uh, an available spot for mentor lead, which is what Pablo used to do. Okay. Are we going to vote for to... those or do we just solve those separately? Well, I put Veronica down as the assistant of VP of Education right now. Uh, mentor lead, um, we Can could I continue have official... to be the lead? Do we have to... Okay, yeah, yeah I want to sure. continue being the mentor lead because I'm building uh, my project, my level four project around that. <laughs> okay, cool. Awesome. Pablo, you, are, you are the mentor lead. Okay, no, no, yeah, no need for nominations. I am the mentor lead, yeah. All right, and that will close that out. Pablo, I'd like and... to help you with that. Uh, yeah, I will. I'll, I can use your help, yeah. We'll talk okay. offline. All right, Agreed. now we're moving towards the normal meeting. It is 12.28, so I do want to go ahead and move quickly uh, to make sure that we have time for everything. Um, Ava, you are the table topics. If we don't get to you, I'm so sorry, but uh, we'll try our best. Um, our timer is going to be, actually, do we have any new people? First timers. 
I may seem new, but I've been a member since last October. Okay, so you know the rules. Meetings. Yes. Okay, Thank so you. we're going to go ahead and skip some of the, the normal stuff at this point. So our and timers Delna. and words. Go ahead. Delna is new. Okay. Yeah, so is my third meeting. Okay, third. okay. All right. Uh, I'm going to move this along quickly. Uh, timer and awards is Veronica. Veronica, if I could have you do a quick intro of that role, like maybe one minute. Uh, yes, really quick. Okay, so blue is, you're good. Uh, green, you've reached the mark, uh, like the first mark. Uh, yellow, you're getting there. And then red, uh, it's like you're, you're like, you need to stop <laughs> at this point. You have 30 seconds left before uh, you get, uh, el not eliminated, but yeah, you get eliminated from the awards. Is that quick enough, Doug? <laughs> That'll work. <laughs> okay. Ava, we may be able to do one or two topics, so go ahead and give yours. We're going to be playing the game if we have time. Moving on. All right. I'm going to be the general evaluator. Pablo is the grammarian. Pablo? Uh, yes. Uh, the word of the day I already posted on the chat is, uh, is uh, sorry, I'm trying to read, it's a pike. And I'm looking for the, the noun, which basically refers to a feeling of irritation or resentment resulting from a slight, spe uh, especially to one's pride. He left in a fit of, of a pike. So think about that. There's a uh, verb too, but it's a second uh, instance for the verb if you want to use it as a verb. And that will be feel irritated or resentful. That's really what it means. She was piked by his curtness. All right, and we have one speech from Brian Thrasher, who had to run for president and prepare a speech. You were a busy person this week, weren't you? Uh, his speech is going to be Understanding Vocal Variety, and the title of his speech is The Weirdest Class. And just to clarify, what's the uh, time on your speech? Five to seven? Five to, yeah, five to seven. Five to seven, okay. And as a reminder, Veronica is your timer. Veronica, can you can put timer in front of your name real quick for you? For everybody? Um, yeah, I always forget to do that. I'm gonna do that right now. Yeah, it's okay. I forgot to remind you. Mm. So, and uh, Brian, you may start when you're ready. Can you see my screen? And hear yes, me? we right. can. All right. Thank you, Doug. I'll bet any one of you that I had the weirdest class in middle school. I was in an advanced literature and history class. We called it the self-contained gifted and talented class or GT for short. Now, if you were in an advanced literature class, what would you expect to happen? Probably you'd read more books or more difficult books. Same for history, more topics or a deeper dive to get better understanding. But in the GT class, we did things a little bit differently. Let me walk you through our syllabus. We started with calligraphy. Now, this wasn't my personal favorite, but you kind of had to do it to get a good grade, so I went with it. Then we built kites out of tetrahedrons, like you do. We had a chess and mastermind tournament. That was fun, I liked that week. And then to end the semester, we built and painted model cars. Now, this is weird, right? I can't, I still can't believe it sometimes, but this is what we did in our literature class. Luckily, we reserved the weird stuff for literature and had a much more traditional curriculum for history, starting with HTML coding. Then we built marble roller coasters on the wall to demonstrate physics. We programmed our Lego Mindstorm robots to battle each other to the death. And we built harnesses for our eggs so we could throw them off the roof safely. Now, some of you in at least the American education system might have done some of these things at some point. But did you do them in your history and literature class? I doubt it. But I don't want to misrepresent the class. We did do some history. It's just that we mostly did it in the form of simulation. For instance, we were assigned when we studied the French Revolution to either be a noble or a townsperson. The nobles had it good. They could assign homework to the townspeople and they were automatically going to get a good grade at the end of the unit. That is, unless the townspeople banded together, overthrew the royalty and sent them to the guillotine. In hindsight, it was really more of a social experiment than a history class. I, it was a bit Lord of the Flies-like at the end there. At least I assume so. Our class never really read that one. If you can't tell at this point, I had some mixed feelings about the GT class. 
it was very isolating as a kid. We would occasionally run into students in other classes, and our conversations were so awkward. Oh, Miss Peters' class is so boring. All she does is make us copy history textbooks. Hey, Thrasher, what'd you guys do in GT history today? Oh, yeah, right. We learned to cross stitch. Now, I don't want you to think that this was all fun and games either. We did have to do a lot of work. Again, in hindsight, sort of in a child labor law violation sort of way. There was this company called Chatters. It was a hamburger chain, I think started in Utah, but they were expanding to Boise where we were. And the new franchise owners wanted to get the word out. So they did the logical thing and outsourced their marketing campaign to a bunch of 12 year olds. We were in charge of making the marketing campaign for Chatters and the winning team would have their campaign actually used in the real world. So we got to work and it was work. Digital ads, print ads, radio ads, we had to make everything. I remember my team's video ad. At the end of the script, the actor would take a bite of the hamburger, look to the camera and go, mm, mm, delicious. Brilliant stuff. You can tell why we were in an advanced class. <laughs> but we uh, didn't have such great insight with our shooting schedule. You see, we didn't have access to Chatter's hamburgers, so I just had to buy one from the cafeteria, just a normal hamburger. It wasn't very good in that cafeteria, and it was even worse after sitting in my locker for, I don't know, five hours. When I got it out, it was ice cold, and the bun had kind of collapsed in on itself, like a souffle. This was not the most appetizing prop, but I gave it to our actor, the vice principal. He got to the part in the script where he'd take a bite, and he went, hmm, delicious? Alas, his acting could not save the commercial. He couldn't hide his disgust, and we did not win the Chatters campaign. But Chatters did make good on their word. They used the winning campaign in the real world and promptly went out of business. So when I look at these things, I don't actually think of GT. Or rather, when I think of GT, I don't think of these things. I think of two words, stained glass. This is something that a lot of people then and now still don't believe. But what we had to do was we would go to school early in the morning. Sometimes we'd have to get up at five. We'd put on our protective goggles, and we'd pull out our big knives, and we'd start cutting panes of glass, again, in our literature and history class. Then we take those pieces and stick them in a machine called a grinder, which shaves off little particles of glass so they're easier to inhale or rub into your eyes. We take the remaining pieces, wrap them in copper foil, take out a multi hundred degree soldering iron, and melt lead onto the pieces so that they'll stick together. Walking into the GT class during stained glass month was like walking into an army hospital. Cuts, burns, bandaged hands. I remember my friend Donnie, he didn't notice he had a shard of glass in his shoe until eighth period when he started leaving bloody footprints. And what do I have to show for all of this trauma? This. <laughs> this was my best piece. It's a hand mirror made of stained glass. Uh, notice that it has a circle, which I can tell you is a real pain in the stained glass. But I did it. And now I can look in this mirror and be proud because I rose to the challenge. I was just a good test taker. I never asked to be in this class. They, I would have rather had history and literature at the time. But it has taught me that it's good to have many and varied experiences. And overall, I guess I'm still glad that I took it. I do have another thought that occurs to me when I look at this mirror, though, and that is, I hate making stained glass. Ugh. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. That was a very, very interesting uh, class that you took. I can honestly tell you I never had a class like that, ever. All right, so we are going to transition pretty quickly into Ava. Ava, we have, I think we can probably push it till about 1245. So I think we could do a few of them. Perfect. So we're going to be using the Say Anything card game. 
if you guys have been here before, Stacy actually played that game. I own the game too, so I thought, why not? And they have questions on the back, and what you would do is you need to answer them. So, for example, in my opinion, which job would I most like to try for a week? So, or I could just ask it to you straight. You can either answer it about someone else or you can answer it about yourself. So you can, if you wanted, you could say, Ava, I think that this is the job you should try for a week or you can take it as a personal question. And that's just one of them. So who would like to go first? I'll go first. All right, Michelle. So again, it could be, you could try to answer on my behalf what you think my answer would be or what your answer would be. It's all up to you. So in either my opinion or in your opinion, what would be the best desert island movie? What would be the best desert island movie? Like an actual desert or like deserted island? <laughs> it says desert. <laughs> you could say deserted, why not? <laughs> Um, Lord of the Flies is <laughs> my favorite <laughs> deserted island movie because it is a extremely educational uh, and about our overall society. If you have not read uh, Lord of the Flies, I strongly recommend it to anyone. I believe I read that in my fifth grade class somewhere around there. Uh, I think most people have, I'm seeing some, some heads nod. I think it was, it was a great learning opportunity. And I've seen many other um, movies that are created off of that whole idea. Um, there is one that was posted recently on Amazon Prime. I believe it's Wild Things, I think it is. Um, that came out when they're on a deserted island, and it it it's a uh, it's pretty crazy the things that happen and what brought them there and who survives and how they survive and thinking back on what would you do. So I think that for both me and Ava, that our favorite movie would be Lord of the Flies uh, because of the community and the learning of what would you do in that situation, not just to survive but also to survive as a community and survive in your, your, your sanity while you're there. Awesome, thank you, Michelle. I know that one was a little bit of a, a weird one, but I think you answered it very, very well. Great job. Who would like to go next? And shout out to Andre's puppy. Louisa. All right, Louisa. So again, you can, do your opinion or maybe the opinion of your son or me or anyone else in the room. What's the best cartoon character of all time? Crop. <laughs> it's been so long since I watched cartoons, but I have to say the best one has been the Pink Panther. He didn't have to speak at all. He make us laugh. He was so clever. He always had the swag. Uh, I really liked him. And I don't know. In fact, I watched the movie, The Pink Panther, thinking that it was going to be just like the cartoon, and it wasn't. But I just loved the way that they made the old cartoons. And that was one of my favorites back when I was a child. It didn't have to be. There wasn't any language, anything, any communication. It was all uh, body language. It was all expressions. And I'm amazed about the artists, how they make those drawings to make, to transmit whatever they are supposed to be feeling or the situation or the silly jokes that they were doing. I, I thought it was very clever, that character. And... The, the thing that I like the most, and I wish my son would watch it, is it doesn't have any ma malicious stuff. It's so innocent. So I love it. Thanks. Oh, great job, Louisa. That's a good one, too. And the movie was nothing like the animated show. 
All right, it looks like Robert's been nominated to go next. Robert? What is one word that best describes you? I feel like this is an interview question. <laughs> one word to best describe myself. How do you take all the wonderful quirks, the different types of uh, parts of my personality and put it into one single word to define me? I find that a big of a challenge because I don't define myself in one way. So as I think about the possibility of putting myself into one word, I have to start to shed away parts of myself that I actually consider myself to be. Because there's parts of me that uh, I am spontaneous, like to do things on, on the go. There's parts of me that I'm passionate about and I really want to do things that are focused. There's parts of me that I'm very serious and I, and I take a lot of time to delineate and learn and be a part of. So how do I take these different parts of me and put into one word? Well, if this was an interview, I would have to come up with an answer now, wouldn't I? So I guess I have to say something. And what would be the best way to put a foot forward than to say something along the lines of me being very, ah, see, does this count? Open-minded. Because the question is, is a hyphen mean it's two words that equal one, or is it one word that equals two? So th that is the question. But if I had to pick, I would say I'm open-minded because as I look and everything I do and how I do things, I always make sure that I always look at every kind of aspect of it that I can because I am open-minded. There you go. Awesome. Great job, Robert. I loved your thought process there. I'm surprised you didn't go with something like an enigma, but open-minded with the hyphen, I'll take it. So I think, Doug, that is my time. Just so you guys know, this is a freaking fantastic game to play because you get to put yourself in the point of view of the person who normally reads the cards, and then you draw on a whiteboard what your answer is, and then you all vote on who has the best answer for your friend who read the card. Really fun game. One day we'll have to play it, and I will pass that over to Doug. What's the right. name of that again? Say anything. Say anything. I'm going to write it down. Super fun party game. So I posted the uh, election results in the chat. I needed to uh, you know, fix my uh, shorthand uh, so that it was readable. Uh, so there it is, and uh, everybody can see it. Uh, I guess I should have, since we have two Brian's, but I think we all knew. All right, cool. There it is. And we're gonna go ahead and roll right into our evaluation. Kyle, you ready to go? I am, but I will need to come off of mute in order to do that. Yes, uh, it is kind of helpful. Yes, so uh, today we had uh, fellow Toastmasters. We had Brian Thrasher giving us the presentation on the weirdest class, what I, which I can say objectively, uh, was an extremely weird class. <laughs> I, I was in a couple of gifted and talented classes myself and I never did anything quite like that. So I will, I will definitely cede to you. That's the weirdest class that I have heard of. Um, it was a very interesting and entertaining story. Uh, I honestly didn't know what was going to come next. Uh, and I, I think that made it very interesting. I think that Brian, you did a great job of uh, bringing the audience along. And I think that's very important for this kind of presentation where you're going to be covering a lot of varied topics and your audience doesn't necessarily know that, that I think it's important to give the through line as you're coming along. And when we're talking about um, physics and math and stuff, and then we're talking about history, um, your audience may miss some of your introduction or may not fully uh, recognize the point of the, the introduction that you're putting out there. And I think you did a good job of bringing us back along with it as we were going through the presentation. I think that you had a good use of humor throughout your presentation. Something that I always enjoy about your presentations is your use of humor. I can't believe that you got your vice principal to eat a gross uh, hamburger that came out of your locker. <laughs> um, I, was, I was imagining that moment and it, it um, I think your 
vice principal was a, a good sports to go along with that. Um, uh, I think, um, let's see, uh, in terms of things that I would challenge you with just a little bit, I would challenge you to surprise your audience with your punchlines just a little bit, because I know that you do plan a lot of humor into your presentations. And I think that uh, if you, um, if you change the timing just a little bit and you make them wait just a little bit, then the, the trick of the humor is that they're expecting one result and then you, you twist it on them, you give them a different result. Um, sometimes there is a time like the, um, the, the joke about the, uh, the broken glass and rubbing it in your eyes and stuff that I think hit perfectly. And uh, there are times uh, maybe towards the end just a little bit that I think you rush the punchline just a little and then it didn't have that opportunity to um, develop that tension that causes, I think, the more surprise reaction in the audience. So that's the only thing that I would challenge you on. And I, I think in terms of timing dramatic pause wise, then uh, you know the, the pauses for drama or the pauses for humor, I think that um, you do some of them, but you could work into them a little bit more. And overall, just in closing, I just want to say that of the presentations that I've seen that you've given before, and just in general, the Toastmasters presentations that I've seen, you are a master of absurdist humor. So I love your absurdist humor, and I, I really appreciate this presentation. It was an excellent one. So thank you. Thank you, Kyle. And that's well-timed feedback, too, because my next speech is going to be the using humor one. So I'll try to incorporate what you came up with into that. Thank you. All right, and Veronica, you are our timer for today. So could we get the uh, timers report? Uh, yes, you sure can. Okay, so Brian, you were at six minutes and 35 seconds. So we hit yellow. I, I, I thought it was like perfect timing, in my opinion. Um, for table topics, Michelle, uh, so sorry to begin with everybody qualified. So Michelle, you were at one minute and 29 seconds. You were like almost there. I was waiting to like switch to yellow, but you, you got it. Uh, Luisa, one minute and 24 seconds. Robert, uh, one minute and 47 seconds. Kyle, you were at three minutes. <laughs> like I didn't even get to click on red. It's like three minutes and 49 microseconds if you can see my phone. So that was pretty spot on. <laughs> All right. And our awards is also Veronica. So please send your award or your votes for awards to Veronica directly. Brian's uh, holding up his mirror. <laughs> but yes, please. Uh, Andre asked um, me too. Uh, yeah, please uh, uh, send your uh, through the chats, uh, your votes to Veronica. And while you're doing that, I'm going to pass it to Pablo, who's going to give a grammarian report. Uh, we don't have a general evaluator today. I am the general evaluator. Oh, okay, okay. All right. Okay, so I, I was in, inspired by Brian, and I'm going, I focus only on vocal variety and pauses. And I'm going to provide my feedback, what I perceived, trying to imitate what I observe on each one of you and describing at the same time what my, my feedback. So, Brian, you do use your speech, you do change the speed of your uh, speech. You try to do that right well, and also you do raise your tone of voice, but overall your speech felt really fast. There was a lot of things that you wanted to say and you add pauses, but it doesn't give you time to exaggerate your pauses because you're speaking too fast. So think about that. Dog, you use your pauses very well. You are clearly well understood, but you do not exaggerate or use the other two tools, which are changing your volume and trying to do that and the speed. I encourage everyone to use those two things in an exaggerated way in this environment. And I'll show you how. Michelle, you do use your volume. You do change of volume and you do use your change of speed. And that really makes your speeches sound really professional, regardless of what you're talking about. The only thing that you are always subtle, or at least today, is in your pauses. I think you can exaggerate those a little bit more. Luisa, same thing. You did awesome with your speech, 
speed and volume, I've noticed that you have been getting better at that through the years. And again, I just remind that not anyone actually exaggerated their pauses. So I think it's hard when you're not planned for it, but just want to say that. Uh, Robert, you did, you do use your speed, but remember about volume too. You do change your volume, but it's very subtle. Try to be a little bit more exaggerated, a little bit more. And lastly, Kyle, you do use speed uh, same way, but I did not see any change of volume other than the one kind of like when you were, but it's not, it was barely noticeable. So think about that. You try to change your volume. And again, same thing with the process. The process is another tool to exploit. And, uh, and when I said exaggerating, I'm talking about really exaggerating. And you have seen me do that because this is a safe place to do it. And also your mind tricks you. Your mind makes you believe that you're being subtle, but you that you're being exaggerated, but in reality, you are being subtle. So think about that. Thank you. All right, Pablo. That is great. It's probably given Veronica plenty of time to uh, come up with the uh, winner. So uh, Veronica, who's our winner for uh, Table Topics? Okay, so drum roll. Oh, where did my Zoom go? One sec. <laughs> Can't see you guys. Okay, there it is. Uh, let me share my screen. So surprise, surprise. Our winner for first uh, for best speaker is Brian. Woo! It's actually a great speech, so I do agree. He deserves that prize. Uh, for best evaluator, it's Kyle. Woo! And now drum roll. Well, for... Was that also Kyle's first evaluation? Yes, I think it was first evaluation, right? Yeah. Oh, so really? congratulations, that... Kyle. Oh, that was, that was a good. really good evaluation for your first evaluation. Thank I didn't you. know that. Extra that's awesome. I'm encouraging from his mentor, by the way. <laughs> wow, that's that's awesome. So Kyle, you get both awards and first yeah. evaluator and best evaluation. Thank and you. next it is Luisa, Luis, I have to say everybody voted for you. Even if it wasn't like first place, it put you as their second. So that was awesome. That was great. Thank you. I'm so rusty about talking in public. No, ah, it was thank so you. Good. It means a lot. <laughs> Woo. And that's it for me. All right. And it is 1256. We actually have four minutes left. Uh, should, uh, yes, Michelle? I have some important um, question to Andre about what kind of puppy is that? So that that is um, that is Molly. She is two months old, and she is a pit bull, Jack Russell Terrier, and Australian Shepherd mix. So cute! Oh, that's so she amazing. Has really piercing blue eyes. The when... pet, the new pet of the club. <laughs> yeah, sure. We need to see weekly growth. <laughs> All right. Were there any other questions or announcements we had at this point? No, I just want to say congrats to Kyle on his first evaluation. It was right. great. It was really good. Yeah, we need more it, evaluators. <laughs> Kyle can basically teach our workshop now. Look at that. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, everybody. All right. Oh, like, well, he's a veteran with that. That was beautiful. Right? So still, right. you, should, you could all learn from the workshop next week. So don't forget, it's going to be yeah. really awesome. All right. Well, we're going to go ahead and end the meeting now. Give at least people a couple of minutes if they have one o'clock. And thank you, everyone, for joining. Thanks, Doug. Thanks, everyone. Bye, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Bye. 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 Next week.